bag up, you know. They spill the gin and say, but it was 70 years ago. You can turn your top out. Turn your top out at Goose Street, here. I was born here. And you can hit it all the way to Goose School and never meet a car. Never meet one. Now then, you can jump across the road at this time of day. See, I was born here, my father kept this shop. He was a tailor and drapery, he had four, four fellas working for him. Ah, but uh, uh, they've spoiled this village, you know, building all these houses here. See, hey, uh, you knew everybody at one time of day, but now you know nobody and they don't want to know you. But I'd better get, be careful what to say about folks, or otherwise they might be prosecuted. <laughs> I was ringing every Sunday in 1916, when we were at war with Germany. Yeah, yeah. Who else used to ring with you? Percy Plant, Joe Holland, Oliver Benson. Oh, I remember him. He went Canada, didn't he? Yeah. Ah, that's right. Yes. And uh, Sam Pete. Yes. Ah. Uh, that was Millie's uh, father. That's Millie's father. father. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rung the year 27 year. I've let that year in, didn't you? Uh, that you, was an art many you, time. You used to ring it uh, on a New Year's Eve. Oh, ah. Uh, then you used all, to go to always. Red Lion, didn't you? Then we used to go to Red Lion. <laughs> one year at Red Lion and one at Crown. Yeah. Oh, jolly good. Mm. And the seas, seas all that rough piece of ground, do you? Yeah. Well, I've ploughed that many a time. <coughs> Walter Carter was born in Goostree in the year 1900. His grandmother had been midwife to the village and his father was a shopkeeper. But Walter himself was drawn back to the land and for nearly 60 years he tilled the fields within the sound of the bells of Goostree Church. Walter Carter was one of nine children. He then had three of his own and there are now nearly a hundred members of the Carter family in and around the village. He stopped working only last year at the age of 75. Now, as a village elder, he has time for afternoon walks along the Valley of the Bongs with his friend, Leonard Grimsditch. Ah, council, we used to come this road with my mother and father every Sunday night, did you? And we used to come in May time when all this was covered with bluebells. Yes, it grows a lot of bluebells in here, you know? Yeah, yeah. Ah! I wonder why it was called Bongs through here. Why it was what? Why it was called the Bongs. Oh, I don't know. I don't know why it was called the Bongs. It's, always, tell you. it's always, always been eh. called that, hasn't it? Ah, ah, it's always been the Bongs. Yeah, yeah. But it's always been here, hasn't it? Oh, ever since yeah. I can remember, yeah, yeah, there used to be yeah. a seat. Yeah, yeah. Here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, used yeah, to be a seat yeah. there, oh, yeah, yeah, one yeah. time a day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Here comes two or three hearty lads, and we all in one mind. This is that brook there. Yeah. Well, that used to be our weekend bath. <laughs> Did it? Ah. Oh. Aye. When there was a willow bed there. Aye. This scene they couldn't see us when willows were tall. No. People couldn't. Ah. And these here trees were covered uh, with leaves. Uh. We used to come in there and bathe there all Sunday afternoon. Did you? Ah, we did. That had been summertime. Ah, that was in summertime. Uh, uh. I was in the come it winter. No, so, what did you do for a bath in winter then? Oh, we had to have one at home. Oh, I see. Yeah. Ah. First of all, twice, mm. right? Well, um, <laughs> this side. Yeah. Oh, you can't jump the stream. Oh, Bet. Right, you're on. Right, I'll jump first. OK. I've had right seconds. Get rid of them all! Might you fall in? <laughs> 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 oh, God, did you enjoy your one, Susie? Come on, Joe! Woo! Oh, no, 
were, you were never in the Rose Festival very much then. Oh, I was when I was young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sailor mm. boy, Piccadilly, Maple Platter, and oh yeah, and uh, all that sort of thing. John Bull. Oh, I was John Bull twice. Yeah. My, my brother Bill has got was missing in the first war with John Bull for a time. Was he? Ah. And my brother Seth was John Bull twice. Yeah. And my brother Sid was John Bull. Yeah. We used to look forward to that then day, didn't we? Yeah, do you? Yeah. Took Rose Festival. Mm. Well, it was a uh, it was a big deal for us. That and Goosey Races. Oh, you remember Goosey Races? We used to have some fun for that, yeah, didn't we? Did we did that. Yeah. I was born there at that shop. My father kept it. He was a tailor and draper. And he had three men working for him beside himself in that place there behind there. And he used to sell shirts and stockings and all kind of uh, drapery stuff, clothing. And he could make you a suit for £2.10. A three-piece suit, not not the same as you go in the shop and get a, a jacket and a, a, a trousers, waistcoat with it. And he always used to use the best buttons and the best threads there was in the warehouse. And you could go in there and buy a shirt, a Schneefeld shirt, you maybe don't know what they are, they were, they're not existing now, but they were good ones with a flat on the back. Good winter shirt, long ones, not these here short ones, you know, you cover your long ones. And, and you know how much you can you can get them for? Two and six of old money. Two and six bucks for a snail shirt with a flannel back and long ones. Brand winter shirt. The valley of the Bongs along the Crow Brook has been inhabited since the Iron Age. In 1086, the Doomsday Book described the hamlet of Gostray as having about 90 acres rateable to be taxed and containing as much land as a team of oxen could plough in a year, adding cruelly, it was always waste and is so now. Waste or not, this half-mile ribbon of land has supported a healthy enough community ever since. By the end of the last war, its population had risen to around 600, with most houses still clustered along its single street. The building boom of the 50s and 60s began to change this Cheshire village, Red brick development spread up from the road and the river towards the circle of yeoman farmers on the boundary of the parish. The population is now over 2,000. The bones of the old village can still be seen, but now Goostery is almost a dormitory suburb of Manchester, 30 miles to the north. <laughs> Ah, we had some uh, nice and quiet times. We used to go across here, you know, across these fields, fishing, mushrooming, water and egg, pea with egg. We always had to go for each day, get some uh, uh, pea with eggs and water and eggs, otherwise we didn't have it. egg for each Sunday morning. We collected uh, thrustle eggs. And I'm about a dozen, the, dozen, dozen of them put in a frying pan and fried. And if you get to do some thr thrush legs, you, you'll manage for uh, each Sunday breakfast. In 1906, Walter Carter wore the costume of John Bull in Goostery's first ever Rose Festival. It was one of a set made for the village by his father, 
and those very same costumes will be worn yet again by these children this year in Goose Tree's 70th Rose Day. So it's the year before last. We've got one of this year, last year. Oh, there's the Bombles. James Garrett. Alan Maynock, who's uh, John Bull. Can you recognise them? for 21 years. 1938 I took the keys off George Bailey till 1960 I think it was, 60. But I, I, I won't go and tell you what I've seen there because I've seen some things uh, that are not fit for the human eye. In 1916. 16. How, how long did you carry on till? Uh, till they stopped me during the war. During the war, and you didn't restart after the war? No. No. I was the caretaker of this place for 21 years. I saw a lot of fellas come in there who had had a lot of drink when they come to Dandy's. There was a pub across the road called the Crown Inn. Well, I used to keep a, a, a bottle or two for a, a, after hours. <laughs> after hours, oh ah. Walter Carter is the oldest living member of one of Goose Tree's biggest families. In and around the village, he can name close on a hundred people he's related to. He's worked all his life on the land and he only finally retired last year. When you get it all. 
All my mates are gone, they're dead. 76 I am. All my mates are gone. When you get it all, so I've got it all to be left. You've got the van, you can knock about a bit, you can go to some much market, some, and, and all the shuffle. There's one or two fellas as I know in home shuffle, as much about my own age, and I've known them all my life. But they're not mates of mine because they don't live it, used. They've got mates of their own, like to uh, home shuffle and some much. Nowadays, Walter spends most of his spare time in his garden, tending his gooseberry bushes. I'm about the oldest resident as he's been in Gooseberry, 70 years, over 70. His wife Edith is also 76. She's always suffered from arthritis and over the last year she's been more or less immobilised by her illness. She now spends much of her time sitting by her fire watching television. I enjoy the television, it's no use saying I don't, I do. Until I was ill, I never knew there was anything on in the daytime. I watched every afternoon now, you know. Walter doesn't watch it much, but I do. And he goes to bed about 8 o'clock when we're in, and, but I never go before half past 10 to 11. The broad open face of the day. When it is getting near showtime, the berries are getting big and it comes on to rain, I have to run up the garden and take off the rhubarb leaves, which are about three foot in diameter, to cover up the berries for fear they get burst. And we have well, grand rhubarb because he covers it up from being very young and then we get nice rhubarb and very big leaves. We've known one another from little, from being tiny. He and his sister and brothers went to Sunday school where we went. He was always very smart in, in his way. Of course they were with their father being a tailor. They were always smart. He was, used to go bell ringing, you know. She thought a lot about him in his bell ringing. All dressed up and they all had pot hats, you know, in those days. Since he stopped work, he gets down a bit, you know, sometimes it gets on my nerves a bit. He needs something to do, he's always had something to do. And now he'll just go and perhaps chop a box of sticks or something like that and then he comes and sits down, which I think, think he's too much in the house for what he's been used to, you know. Or else, oh, otherwise, no, I can't say anything, my word, he's been very good. The only thing he's had, he had sciatica once, and then he fell down <laughs> some steps and broke his ribs. He had jaundice once, which we laughed about. But I think that's about all that he's had on it. You know, colds, nasty colds. He's been very lucky. He's not been very well lately, but I think he was overtired. And I think he worries. I think it's that he worries that he's ill. But um, I think he'll be better when the weather comes better, he can get out and do a little bit. Because he is going to do a bit of gardening when it gets a bit better weather. Ah, he'll do now. Looks like a prop. I said, on your way. No, no we we treat black lady. How was she? Ah, uh, well, she was one of very good. When does she go back to hospital? A week this Monday. Uh, so she uh, won't be coming yet. No, you see, the, the, the nurse has to come twice a day 
for pop drops in her eyes. That's the reason why she dare not come out. Yes. She dare not leave her home because she's got to be at home when the nurse comes. Yes, well, I don't suppose they will let her till the doctor's seen her again. So, uh, well, that's what I mean. Tonight in the Crown, the 30 elected members of the Gooseberry Society are registering for the summer show. Failure to attend this meeting results in the offender being barred from the show. Jeff, you knew him. And, uh, and, I do, I went and, to school uh, with him. And, there you are. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, Eva. Eva and Harriet. Eva and Harriet. And yeah, Harriet. That's right. Well, I've got the, con I've got the corner cottage. Yeah, the, the, cottage old, the old lodge. The gardener's cottage and the coachman's cottage. I, I, I'm in the gardens. I was there once. That's there. right. Yes, right. That's yeah. Right. And then there's a uh, there's a bit of a cottage, very nearly opposite that uh, old-fashioned house that it built. Yeah. Don't know. We yes. had a show without a bar one year, and we got finished a lot earlier. So oh, I knew that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a lot easier. It was a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same, is it? Can you remember that one? That was the year the chaps of Worcester was here. Can you remember us running across here for a pint about The secretary of the Gooseberry Society is the only woman member, Julie Lockett. The chairman is Tom McCartney. No, the carrier's up disappeared and left me to carry the last few berries up. It was me who didn't get a pint. The Gooseberry Society, as far as I know, has been going since about 1896. It's something that was started apparently by the Lancashire weavers, I think, with the idea of uh, something for the working man to do, something that he could do and uh, probably do better than anybody else. The May one, sorry. No, not the village hall. Not the one for the village hall. We can't organise that tonight, I don't think. Holmes Chapel Show is the longest running one round here. I think they, they're talking about 150 anniversary before long, anyways, down there. One of the oldest ones at present. There's one in Yorkshire, you know, at Egdon Bridge. Now, this bloke up there, he claims to be the world champion grower, a bloke called Tom Ventris. Gentlemen, I've got, uh, down here, I've got a, a query about uh, as regards helping the Village Hall Foundation with funds. I had a letter from the chairman and he suggested that uh, we would uh, probably like to raise some money by running a function for the Village Hall. Now to my way of looking at this, I, I think that we, we ought to do this thing. I don't know what the feeling of the meeting is, but to, to my way of looking at it, I, I think we should help these people. They're prepared to give us the facilities free I don't see why we shouldn't take advantage of it. We grew the biggest berry two years ago, and uh, I know it got around with claiming a world championship, but we, ne we never claimed anything for it because we knew it wasn't a world champion berry. You propose we do a show and uh, we give them this? I propose it to a bingo. As far as I know, I am the first woman growing member. There have been women growers who have continued the work of the husband after the husband's died. But as far as I know, I'm the first growing secretary as it were. We, we're looking upon the village centre committee so it's a foreign body. That's this right. village hall is for us. It it's is not for, for us, anybody yeah. else. It's for us. We're part of it. We want the facilities. We shouldn't look upon this no, as no. what we're doing them a favour and giving them something. No, we're only we're doing a duty to us only to support That's right. it. That's yeah. my attitude. If it had been done a lot of years right. ago we'd had a new village hall a lot cheaper than the one we're going to get. village hall gets knocked down and we don't support a new one, where you going to all your show? No, no show, no show. Sure. Yeah. I think at first yeah. the other members were rather suspicious and I think perhaps they suspect that we had a garden and I didn't really do it all by myself but now I feel that I am accepted as one of the growers. Well, can we get the subscriptions now if, uh, if Julie will read the names out George will take your money off you and it is one pound and five pence and 55 pence for, me for, 55 pence for pensioners. What? So if you take it, does Julie read the names out and give me the money? One pound and five pounds. Well, I was stupid one year, you know, and I wouldn't go to the March meeting and they chucked me out of the show. Hey, they were showing me like as they were the boss. I was... Walter? How many? Fifty-five. Very much. Very cheap. John Morton. There was one fella, he proposed me every meeting as they was, that I should be a member of that show. Because he said it's growers we wanted this show, he said of Walter's a grower. There's a lot of them that uh, are not growers. They, they only go there.
for the bait. I'll this. Yes, I'll get that. Hey, what key? Right key. He's not a bad sort of a fella, Frank, in his wife, Shelley, on his own. He always comes and says, Bye, Mrs. She said, I've got to sit again, thee. He said, I've got five of your five. <laughs> she said, Me Mrs. said so. So he comes and sits against me, pushes himself in. So it's quite all right. We're mates and we've known one another a good while. Another one there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> What's this one? Oh, that's a uh, surprise. No. What then? It's a derby. Is it? Yeah. What about this? What do you think of this one? That's another kitchen. That's right. Eh? That's right. You're not far wrong, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> You've left a lot of wood in that and all. Well, I'll get more berries if I do that. Do you want to go look at the others now? Aye, aye. Well, I'll hey, you're on my leeks. I'm not them of your leeks. I'm not Come treading on there. them. Come on, this way. I'm not treading on them. There's nothing here. Only some muck. Thank I you, I want to have a look at these. What's this one? It's a woodpecker. He's backward, he is. Backward. He <laughs> said, me, he's a bit backward. He's more, they're more forward than yours, aren't they? Oh, they're a lot forward than mine. You think I'm going to win this time? I should do. Be in, the, be in the first ten? I be in the top ten. I, I tried to it's approach the subject of Gooseby showing from a purely scientific point of view. And I think it was a great mistake because I tried to analyse the type of root system, the shoot system, uh, every system the plant had and tried to break it down and feed each individual process. But I think that was a great mistake. And I think this one got a mole under it, it aren't it? No, it's not a mole. Some people have been growing gooseberries for 35 years. And I've only been growing them for five. And I think experience really is the biggest ingredient for growing a fine gooseberry. Some scientific principles no, must obviously here? apply. And therefore, I try to feed every stage of growth yeah, of the gooseberries and try and give them all the care I possibly can. Yeah, they got, you've got to put on quite a lot of, um, oh, I don't know well, any, let's call them chemicals. What have you put with it? I put some bone meal and some potassium dihydrogen sulfate and a good handful of dried blood. Kill them. <laughs> it won't <laughs> kill them. <laughs> kill them stone dead, that will. What do you think of this one? This is, um, let's have a look at it. What is it? Yeah. Oh, this is a Monty. This one. But I think it's a woodpecker, really, you I know. know. Well, the, the same variety as a woodpecker, you would job tell one from the other. And these are the reds. What's not that? Light George? Yes. But I'm not, oh. le not left as much wood in that one, Grandad. There's plenty of wood in it. There's plenty of wood in it. You think I should have cut more off? No, no, there's plenty in there. Leave some wood. It's simply riches and always said, don't cut them off. You can always pull them off. If you start cutting them off, you gotta put them back again. This one is a Lloyd George, but it's behind that one there. It's a later variety. Oh, that's news to me then. I didn't know there was any later variety. <laughs> that, that news. Anyway, what do you should learn something. What do you think of them? They're very nice. They're very good. These are. They're a lot better than them. Are they more forward than yours? Ah, a lot. Right. A lot. They'll do very well if you don't win this time, you never will. <laughs> anyway, you're going to have your coffee now? Ah, we might as well. She always comes every Come week then. and has a look at the goose fish and I go there and have a look at her. It's snowing. It's snowing? Look at it. Look at it. 
Had she, she'd got a little bag full of stuff. She'd been in Murray shopping. What, about 17? For a little bag full of stuff. She didn't give it a name, but I, I don't know that. I don't know bother with these bad names. Oh, I think she... Well, she'd been oh, to uh, some kind of... Uh, I don't know whether it's college or what it is, and had uh, so much education with uh, uh, plants and that sort of thing. And then she, she, she's so interested in them. And if anybody's interested, they sort of can learn more and quicker than anybody who's not interested. Let's have a coffee. No, I'm not Are you sure? Ah, I'm sure this one? No, none of them. This one, then? This no, one? No, no, none of them. This one? No, no, no. Which one? That one? No, that one. This one? That one. This one. Goes to that one goes round once every minute. I know that. You've told me that one. <laughs> and you see that one? Yeah. Well, that goes round once every hour. Where? And you see that one? Yeah. Well, that goes round once every 12 hours. Oh. See, and then you can tell the time like that. And that is the date of the month. What? Only my clock's a bit stopped a bit and it's lost a day too. <laughs> Two weeks later, Walter Carter died. to this thing we call death. Let us ask for strength that when we come to it, it may be with the same confidence that we now ask that this soul may be received into God's presence. Bear and love and to die in thy favor, that when the judgment shall come which thou hast committed to thy well-beloved Son, this our loved one and we may be found acceptable in thy sight, Grant this, O merciful Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only Saviour, Mediator and Advocate. Amen. I'm glad I'm not sleeping now down in my hall. Then away he runs in his merry mood over the fields and into the woods. To find any small grain there chance to be, or any small berry that hangs on a tree. From early morn till late at night, this dear little creature is his own delight. Looking down on the earth and up at the sky, and he says, What a pretty little dormouse am I. <laughs> Shakespeare. <laughs> Get to the <laughs> Well, you know, I don't remember I this year the place being cut. This Did you see Ida a, looking at this you? This year used to be a sandy lane. But <laughs> I think it used to come out against Brickbank Lane at one time a day, before this was cut, and well, this was why they called it New Platt. And I don't know whether I'd have got my teeth. Well whether done. My, my teeth had to be Did you see it. Ida? Did you see Ida? Did you see Ida? Ah, oh. yeah. Yes. Yes. There's somebody coming up with some... Uh, you got any ducks? <laughs> Come no. in, then. No. Eh? No, no, not them. What, what you been for? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what I say. I think one, one shot at this side is it. Hey? Oh, I don't know. Young Did shots. Pro I don't think it's a flower now. Yeah. It's, is it a, that a Japonica? Eh? Hey? Is that a Japonica? Ah. Ah, it's very nice. You put that back.
gene has, but what's it? Some tablets. Well, I dare say. I can't whistle because I've got the teeth in. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs>